every image taken by is the green uh, by center two is downloaded twelve times on the e, from the ESA service, and on top of that, it's mirrored by everyone: uh, Google, uh, Amazon, and uh, redistributed. We have a completely open data policy. Images are can be downloaded for free. We even have APIs to download images. This has generated a huge community that uses this data from commercial purposes. Uh, Finton just made a very nice uh, analogy with, the, with the, the old GPS. When GPS gave one meter precision and people was able to put GPS terminal in handhelds, in portable devices, this created an explosive market. We are on the verge of this thing also for uh, uh, Earth observation uh, products. And in fact, there are a lot of commercial Earth observation endeavors uh, uh, out there. And to, to give you some numbers, uh, we're talking about uh, an overall amount of uh, several tens of petabytes of data uh, downloaded with a with a, sorry, uh, with an increase of 10% uh, per month. So we have 200,000 uh, users uh, uh, downloading data, and most of them making money out of it because they generate commercial products out, out of it. And the shift is that in the past, people wanted images. Want a nice image that you put as a background of your screen of uh, your CD, seen from satellite. Now, nobody cares about the image. People want product. The uh, wine harvester in, uh, in Burgundy wants to know when their grapes are ripe. And you need to develop application for that. And this also calls for an integrated system where you integrate satellite data with, uh, this was presented yesterday by the, by the fella at uh, European uh, Space Weather, uh, European Weather, uh, 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 European Long uh, Weather Prediction Center, you need data from a lot of systems uh, to go together. We are one of the most important ones because satellites are the uni unique way to provide global coverage in short time with uh, reliable data. <coughs> and uh, so, AI is a tool that needs to be deployed in several different applications. So not all of them are the same. So um, I have divided this in three type of applications. You have mission critical applications that uh, if I want to do landing on a distant planet, I want to do safe landing, uh, landing in a place where are no boulders and my probe can uh, land safely, uh, safely, not like the Israeli one, uh, this is mission critical. I need to, to provide uh, from my, the response of my image processing system uh, a level of confidence on what I'm doing. And this is similar also a lot of safety critical application uh, that are on Earth, like self-driving cars, uh, medical. Then uh, there are the pure image processing, things that we're doing now. You take the Sentinel data on, on the cloud, you process them and you create a product out of it. And then there are the edge application. Not the mix of the two is the one that creates uh, applications. So the adaptable platform, platform that you fly in space and can adapt to uh, changing environment, can autonomously react to failures uh, or, uh, uh, or uh, spikes in the, in the behavior, these were I see machine learning, artificial intelligence as, a, as a, having a high potential. In Earth observation, I said that. Earth observation is something where we have already the technology and we have just to deploy it in space. Fintan will uh, talk about uh, one satellite that will be launched in August that uh, has the Movidius chip as accelerator and uh, will greatly enhance the capability of uh, the satellite, because we can do data reduction on board, product, product generation on board. Um, and uh, in uh, visual navigation, there are all the image processing and um, pl uh, platform application that uh, mostly into the domain of, of visual uh, 
uh, feature extraction, uh, obstacle avoidance, uh, uh, autonomous rendezvous and docking. Uh, this is a list of things by far not comprehensive and as a matter of fact, uh, I'm coming from a very conservative uh, environment uh, and I'm here also to look for ideas and, uh, and uh, proposal that uh, have an impact on what is our architecture. Uh, until now, our current proposal is to fly extremely simple satellite that basically I have I, that can be imagined as a picture as a camera, taking a raw image, a bitmap images, stores this image, send it to ground, and it's all post-processed with relatively lengthy time on ground. That's what we have. Everything is proprietary, everything uh, is bespoke. There's very little that can be done on, on space. The idea is uh, the idea is to move it uh, uh, to a system that resemble more the way you do imaging on ground. So you have, uh, your, uh, you have a standard format that goes into the onboard mass memory and an artificial intelligence coprocessor that is able to process the images on demand with dedicated application depending on what uh, you're supposed to do. Adding, either discarding the images, adding metadata with information, Downloading only the metadata, doing data fusions with other sensors. Uh, all this is, is possible. I put whales there because we have a request from WWF to use uh, Earth observation satellite to monitor wildlife. This is possible, but it will never be the main uh, purpose of a satellite because it's not, nobody will pay WWF to the site for that. These are type of aggressive science that can be done on existing platforms. So, this has an imp as I said, this has a huge impact in terms of the way we build satellite. We have to be a bigger mass of memory. Uh, we have to have a generic AI platform uh, that we can develop once forever, means, and uh, that, we can also, that can also be exploited by any user in the world uh, to develop their own application, again, WWF, or uh, anyone that wants to count cars in parking lots uh, of uh, malls. This is being done, uh, this is not a, a random example. And uh, this is supported by the system to go from a FIFO, first in, first out approach, to a, a on-demand download of data by multiple users in multiple locations. So these kind of ideas, we will discuss this. One of the things I will announce here uh, in uh, Digital Technology Working Days, uh, there is, uh, you will have this presentation with all the information. Uh, next June in uh, Tallinn, Estonia, uh, there will be a dedicated uh, uh, ESA event where ESA is supposed to receive uh, inputs from uh, academia, SMEs, uh, industries on possibility that we have because we will have a dedicated, uh, and this is in the next, call for ideas uh, on uh, AI for space. So this is uh, on, uh, you can already go on the website. Uh, this will be in the next few days. Uh, we will be receiving ideas uh, and uh, try to build our roadmap and finance uh, the ideas that uh, are better suited uh, with, uh, with this roadmap. This is very important, it's all open to is a member state that more or less overlap with the audience here. And uh, so I expect uh, this is a wake up call for the community to think that uh, there, are, there is a large room for application of, uh, of your know-how into space. We are already doing it uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, we need help uh, because this goes well beyond the normal know-how for uh, space data handling engineers as I, as I am. So my contacts are uh, in the presentation. If you need any further help, just come with it. <laughs>